Recently, I went on a shoot for a little short that I was working on, specifically Take Control, that I released not too long ago. Everything went rather smoothly on the shoot. I got the shots that I wanted really quickly, but then something rather unfortunate happened. Yeah, so my phone screen broke. After I got the final shot, I just went back home. I was feeling slightly annoyed, but I figured it wasn't too bad, so I just went to sleep. The next day, I kept on using my phone, but I quickly realized that it was only getting worse and worse. I then looked up a phone repair company that promised quick returns and had good reviews, so I sent it in. I figured it was only gonna be a couple days. No big deal. Of course, the phone didn't come back in two to three days, so I reached out to them. They told me after some messy communication that it was gonna take a lot longer than expected because the back cover was also broken and they had to order in a new part if I wanted to get that repaired because they didn't have it in stock. So that's where my phone detox became a 12-day one. This is a total first world problem, of course, but the whole thing got me thinking. See, I hadn't been without a phone for over 12 hours for more than 10 years. I'm 23 now, and I got my first phone when I was 11. And like many, over the years, I'd gotten into the habit of having it on me at all times. In a sense, it's safe to say that I'd gotten seriously addicted to this little device over the years. But to no one's surprise, of course, because smartphones have become so interwoven with our everyday lives. I remember having this course at uni about new media technology where we talked about how we humans have basically already evolved into androids. You know, those half human, half robot kind of things, Terminator style, but not quite. We've basically become androids because our phones are so linked nowadays to our identity. They have so many functions and they're already interwoven with our personalities. If you look at social media, for example. And then there's dopamine. Dopamine is very widely talked about now, almost a buzzword I'd say, but it's pretty relevant to this type of situation. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that your nervous system uses to send messages between nerve cells. It affects how we feel pleasure, how we think, how we plan, how we strive towards things, how we find things interesting, how we get motivated, and also how we manage to stay focused on things. Dopamine is very much interlinked with pleasure, and our phones and the apps we use basically act like slots at a casino. This is because they engage a gratification cycle that's associated with dopamine release. If you're interested in reading more about this on your own, I've dropped some links to research below that you can check out. So effectively, I was cut off from constant access to some form of rewarding, pleasurable hormone release by not having my phone. At first, I'd say it was rather annoying because I use it for so much communication with loved ones, friends, but also professionals, coworkers, colleagues, that I'm reaching out to to collab with or to work on projects with as a self-employed videographer and photographer. But that fell away and it kind of made me feel like I was missing something or I wasn't making progress at the same pace, the same rate that I was used to before. But then after a while, I got used to the whole situation and I started noticing some things that I found quite positive. One of which is for example, the fact that I got rid of this compulsive habit of checking my phone. Some of you probably relate to this, but sometimes I tended to check my phone, look at it, and then put it back. And after 30 seconds or so, I checked my phone again, not even remembering what I actually saw when I checked my phone because I gotten in the habit of checking for notifications or some kind of distraction so often that I completely made myself numb and completely living outside of the moment when I was actually doing that action of checking my phone. Ever since I was forced into this detox, this imposed detox, I've gotten rid of that behavior. So I'm not checking my phone compulsively anymore. Also, funnily enough, I had less anxiety in certain ways. Anxiety is a bit of a strong word in this case, but it's just this little underlying feeling of pressure or nervousness 
to be constantly available. For example, at the dinner table, just first thing in the morning, getting up, basically all day long. I noticed that when I didn't have my phone and I wasn't constantly available for notifications or messages, even from loved ones that I enjoy talking to on a regular basis, it still kind of took away some form of anxiety there because I didn't have to keep my eye out all the time. It's not that much of a big deal, I guess, but it does help me to live in the moment more when I'm just sitting at the dinner table eating my food or when I'm out talking to people, doing any kind of activity whatsoever if I don't have that constant feeling of having to be available at all times. It is kind of nice sometimes. I, I'd say I, I do still enjoy talking to people, obviously. I have to be available in a certain way for professional purposes as well, but this option or this realization that I can just turn my phone off or just sometimes I'll just leave it on my desk sometimes and just go do something or especially when I'm doing sports or something I tend to not check it a lot anyways and now at the dinner table as well I try to keep it away from me as much as possible and I think it's a good byproduct of the detox. So those two things, the fact that I have less little nudges of anxiety, that that leads me to live in the moment more, along with this breaking of that habit of compulsively checking my phone, I think are the two biggest positives I've gotten out of this 12-day detox. And I'd say it's a, a big recommendation for anyone that notices these same things, this little struggle of compulsively checking your phone. It'll probably help you if you just impose some kind of detox on yourself, at least for a couple of days, to see if that breaks the whole compulsive behavioral process that you're in with that compulsive checking. And yeah, just generally living in the moment a little bit more, I think is something that a lot of us nowadays have heard about, read about, and kind of idealized in a certain way. And I know for a fact that I struggle a lot with it, uh, very much overanalyzing in my head a lot of the times. All these little things that I can do to just make myself more aware of what I'm actually doing in the moment without thinking of the future constantly or reminiscing on certain things that have just happened or that are going through my head all the time. If I, if I find these little things that I can do to um, stay away from distraction and just focus actually on what I'm doing because phones just act as some kind of distraction in that sense, they don't bring you into the moment, then I think that's a great thing. Um, photography, for one, also helps me quite a bit sometimes to live in the moment a bit more, which is a nice addition and light, a nice little extra motivation uh, that goes along with my passion. But yeah, I, I invite anyone to try it out. Try out a detox. Try out a detox of your phone or whatever else, whatever kind of technology that you feel like you've gotten a little bit addicted to. I think it could be interesting. Um, probably warn some of the people around you or just reach out to them on your computer then or something to tell them that you're not available at all times for the coming week let's say or a couple of days or however long you want it to be just to test that out I think it has some great benefits if you have some of the same struggles that I had and yeah that's that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed that if you have any suggestions or any thoughts about the whole topic then uh, please let me know I'm very much interested to hear what you have to say about this whole thing and um, if you have any ideas for future challenges, like I said in the last video, I'm very much interested to hear what you have to suggest there. I'm always kind of thinking about things that I can try out in the future and that I can also document to see um, what the whole process has been like and then to just share the whole experience with other people. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you did like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and also follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna be seeing this in every video pretty much where I sit down like this, uh, but like, like I said before, it, it does really help. So um, I appreciate it a lot if you do it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See ya, I appreciate you.